I'm going to kill this motherfucker. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's very much that look. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to be cool. <laughs>
they are the ones that went out there and they it, they are like if you look at this at this moment they're like people in church they're like it's like they fanning themselves they talk oh lord oh i can't wait to say this shit lord jesus they have all kind of tweets going in there they got one dude waking up in the middle of a casket talking about had my funeral been going on during the, Pan- the black <laughs> panther trailer <laughs> I, I love it because if you look at it, people, <laughs> there's people on here talking about, and it's not a joke. Let me see if I can go down and find some here. Uh, people, you know, they get they getting their black pride on, giving the, the doing the, the raising the fist right there. This is from uh, uh, the Fresh, Fresh Prince, Br- uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I didn't even know the Fresh Prince of Bel Air was that black ever. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, but they got they uh, on there. They have people talking about. What they gonna be wearing when they go to uh, when they go to the Black Panther uh, uh, opening? They talking about because there's one thing here they were talking about they gonna be dressing up like the uh, like Eddie Murphy from uh, Coming to America, <laughs> <laughs> and that is not a joke. Black people are picking out suits like they going like like Sunday suits like they going look like yeah. to, to church on Easter. Well, I wouldn't mind having one of those King Joffy Jafur coats with the lion on it. Oh, yeah. Yesterday, I saw a white dude with a backpack with a lion head on the back. It was shaped like a lion head. Almost, really? Yeah. I almost jacked him for that shit so I could wear it for the Black Panther. Yeah, but it would have roared and bit you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is my favorite one. When Donald Trump came through pushing people out the way. And they said, me pushing white people out the way to stand in line first for Black Panther. <laughs> Move, <laughs> a Negro coming through, but that's <laughs> it's funny. People really are picking out outfits. I'm gonna tell y'all something. When y'all go see this movie, it's gonna be a long line of black people wearing loud, colorful suits because they, they like like black people going to a comedy show. How's that it's different from any time? I know, I know. If you ever go to a black comedy show, the comedy's in the line before you even get right. in. <laughs> Looking at all these Batman villains out there. I know they're gonna have clowns at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's racist. <laughs> but yeah, man, this Batman is a villains. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of multicolored black people out there. Yeah, you all know it's true. Come on now. Don't go on drop on me. No, no. I, there's a there's a store here. You walk in there and you see all those suits lined up for you to buy. I'm like, okay, I'm going somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's called Pimp Sauce. <laughs> <You know? laughs> is this a clothing store, a candy shop? I can't tell. But here's the here's the deal with why. This is such an important thing for black people and for a lot of people out there, period. Now, because as I said, some people are saying it's it's just a movie. You're going to get the same thing that you get in Iron Man, Spider-Man, Thor, Avengers. What are y'all going crazy about? No, 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 you ain't never seen shit like this before on the front end and on the back end. And I'm and, and, and here's not counting a, steel. Oh no, no. <laughs> not counting steel. <laughs> That's a very underrated black hero right there. We, we as a people need to come together and pay respects. <laughs> I'm, I'm a superhero. <laughs> Boy, they did. It. They did. Oh, they did that nigga, nigga wrong right there. He did himself wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta stop and take a look at this right here because y'all, y'all love y'all ain't seen still. You need to do yourself a service. <laughs> see it. First of all, support black businesses. <laughs> but, but second, they put. I love the way they put that helmet on him. And every time they put that helmet on him, he just goes. I said this before. I don't mean any offense, but he just goes retarded. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like are his eyes crossed? Thing? Yeah. <laughs> It's like that helmet just fried his brain. Like, it's just too hot. <laughs> Where am I really? Oh, okay, <laughs> and yeah, we'll throw in Meteor, Meteor Man, too. <laughs> sure, why not? Just for good measure, man. Support your black heroes. <laughs> but with this is, uh, let me see here. Let me tell y'all why this is so important. Because I understand there is no glut of superhero things going on. And I understand, too, no, there is a glut. I mean, I'm sorry. No, there is a huge glut of superhero movies coming out. And a lot of people think, well, you know, again, what's so special about a black movie? This is 2017. Exactly. You wouldn't think that some of the things that this movie's doing would be a first. But it is. And the, a lot of people are just, they're just happy that you're getting a movie and a big Hollywood movie with a, mainly an all-black cast and ain't none of them Negroes in chains getting their ass beat. 
or going to church at the end of the movie. Or going to church at the end of the movie. <laughs> I'm talking about a big budget movie. I'm, you know, we, Tyler Perry works with those micro budgets. He can do what he wants to do. I'm talking about when Hollywood sinks some money into something, they love it if you, in a field, getting your ass beat. They love it if you marching, asking white people for freedom, getting your ass beat. They love it if you serving, getting your ass beat. <laughs> It, whether it be metaphorically or physically. That's something that, that, that Hollywood is used to. And a lot of people are saying, and it got to the point where we as black people, we didn't want to say it for a long time, but we got we, it was almost like Holocaust movies. We said, we are sick of this shit. Mm. How come this shit? These movies are beating my ass now. <laughs> uh, I started to, come out, started to come out these movies, my back was bleeding. <laughs> you know, it's, it, was, it was something where black people were just tired of, kind of, uh, of seeing that in movies and being very vocal about it. Uh, Snoop Dogg, call a little bit of hell. Call a little bit of hell for him coming out on on the internets and saying, "I'm sick of all this." He <laughs> to put it in his words. I'm sick of this slave shit. He uh, he did this when the, the remake of uh, Roots came out, and he was very vocally upset. No disrespect, but I can't watch no motherfucking more black movies where niggas getting dogged out. Twelve years of slave, Roots, Underground. I can't watch none of that shit. Sick of this shit. How the fuck they gonna put roots on on Memorial Day? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point, man. <laughs> I don't wonder what's going on in this video. Did this air conditioner break down? <laughs> well, that's the thing. It seemed like he was talking while he was having a heat stroke at the same time. <laughs> so it makes it hard to take what he's saying seriously, <laughs> even though it is something to consider. Yeah, yeah, he actually loved roots when he saw it. <laughs> and he had that heat stroke, and I mean, fuck this show. A lot of people. They backed him up on that. I remember we we saw the that last movie, uh, uh, not a uh, Birth of a Nation. Birth of a Nation. We backed the movie up, but we were saying that, you know, good and people need to be reminded these movies have their place. But I'm tired of this shit, mm. and it's only because Hollywood is only comfortable with a few things uh, when you have a large cast of color. And especially when that when that cast is uh, you know uh, uh, representing Hollywood with a bigger budget, you know Hollywood is used to seeing. As I said, they're used to seeing the images of the slave. They're used to seeing anything that makes people feel sympathetically superior. Sure, you know, oh these poor black people getting it. Or Hollywood's just happy to downright just remove the black person and just take everything cultural from them. This is how we do it. This is how you steal shit. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm talking about Pitch Perfect. I didn't like the fucking movie. Never liked any of these movies because they only got one black chick in there, and everybody's singing all these fucking rap songs and R&B songs, and and you know, and everybody's singing it with soul and shit. It's like it's it's the musical version of uh, of uh, those dancing movies. You know, yeah, uh, which is what I thought that was when you first put it on. Yeah, and it's, Ste it's step up, step up. Yeah, the step up movies. Now I don't want anybody out there when we're saying this. This is not a militant rant. This is not anything against white people at all. You know, I, I please don't take it that way. Uh, you know, and I, and I just learned that we can't please anybody here. Either you know we, we either we're too black for some people or we're not black enough. <laughs> you know, I just finally just take it take it as it comes. You can't please anybody. Sure. But, you know, there, there is a point to be made about how Black Panther would not have been made five years ago. Sure. Hollywood would have been scared to do it. Even when Hollywood was opening the door to a lot of black directors back in, you know, when, in, when Spike Lee was uh, something where he was, he was the talk of the town. And they start uh, Hollywood starts saying, well, yeah, these black people they actually can bring in some money for their for their people. <laughs> you know, even then when they had these directors come in and they were being marketed and hyped up, they even tried to get white people to come in and see some of their movies with those hood films before white people start standing away saying shit. They shooting up the place. I ain't going in there. <laughs> but, you know, back when uh, back when something like uh, Boys in the Hood came out. It was a story about a 23-year-old director, John Singleton, and they were saying how this guy has a new artistic vision, and they were marketing it that towards white people as well as black people. Ricky! Oh, oh. fuck. <laughs> Ricky too slow. Ricky too slow. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my legs, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh! It's still a rough scene, but it was at that point where uh, white people said, fuck that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But I do feel, you know, again, even with those movies being as violent as they were and, they, you know, doing that whole genre and phase of hood movies, it was still 
at the beginning marketed towards the white audience because they say, well, you know, something is still something where people say, oh, these these poor black people in these innocent cities killing each other. You know, that's so sad. But to <laughs> I'm sorry, you said poor black people in an innocent city. In, like, uh, in an innocent black people in a poor no, city. No, I said inner city. <laughs> oh, okay, I yeah, yeah, said yeah. in an innocent city. I was like, yeah, maybe I did say innocent. <laughs> I ain't never been in inner city before. <laughs> I don't go there. <laughs> no, no, but. You know, it's uh, it's something that they would have been they would have been uh, scared to this kind of movie, uh, Black Panther. They would have been scared to do that today, and mainly because more than the image itself, more than just you know all these black people being someone intimidating on the screen, it's the business. That's what that's what it is. It's the business, and they're afraid to gamble. And the idea of having uh, a superhero movie. That costs a lot of money. That putting a lot of money on that roulette wheel mm -hmm. with an all black audience. You're like, oh no, we can't afford to lose that much. We don't. We don't want to. Yeah, exactly. But then once they set Black Panther up in Civil War and saw the response, mm. and it's like, all right, we've laid the groundwork. People are going nuts. Our our office is getting flooded by emails and mail asking us when are we gonna make a Black Panther movie? Yeah. Now we feel like we can do it. Yeah, and you and. It, that's an important thing you, you mentioned, Martin, is that once it had to be proven. It had to show people that it was okay because uh, if, even if you look today, now there's a lot of things that you can be that, that you can call a black movie, but to have a movie with an all black cast and a black director, <laughs> mm -hmm. you might get look if you got a name and a track record, you might get fifty million, but you ain't getting a hundred million dollars. And I'm, I'm going back and looking at some of the history of movies that are directed by black directors, some with big names, some that you think would have some pull in Hollywood. Now, I'm, I'm sure I've, I've missed some things right here, but you've got to keep in mind, I'm not talking about movies that have black people in it. I'm talking about movies with black directors also. Uh, you got like uh, Fences, Denzel did that, $24 million. 12 Years a Slave with an all-star cast, $17 million. Uh, Selma, $20 million. Uh, I, uh, and then you have... Straight out of Compton, which cost fifty million dollars, but if you look like that's the biggest budget in a long time, I really couldn't find anything that a black director had done with uh, a huge budget like that since Malcolm X, directed sure. by Spike Lee. So just by budget alone, I mean, I don't know what the budget is on this, but it's going to be over a hundred million dollars to, to to have a black director entrusted with a hundred million dollars with a huge black cast. Mm -hmm. That's a huge thing that you have never really seen before. That's what I mean on the back end. That's why people are looking at this and thinking that it's so important to see this because not only is it, is it a good image for people, but you're going, to, uh, you know, you're going to see doors open for a lot of people if this is a success. Sure. Maybe not right off the bat, but at some point. And some people are like, man, you, look, you're talking about these $100 million movies with black heroes in it. You had your boy Nick Fury in there. <laughs> you had the Falcon up in there. Their sidekicks are side characters. Uh -huh. They are not main characters. And as we say, they have supporting people in there. Well, Blade had his whole movie. There's a war going on out there. He makes the weapons. I use them. Now, one will lead them to conquer mankind. But he was a minority in his own movie, <laughs> you know? Everybody, I mean, not that well, that's bad. because he was a daywalker. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> he was going to have vampires, so that automatically made him a minority. <laughs> yeah, daywalking vampires do not get enough roles in Hollywood, man. And it's a fucking shame. <laughs> but nah, you know, it's, uh, that, that was a thing uh, where it was still uh, a bunch of actors who was like saying, okay, well, these are going to get the white audience in. So this, this, like I said, still nothing seen. And let's get right down to what it really is, why it really is important. Because... It's as I was coming up as a kid, and I know I don't expect everybody to relate to this. I don't expect everybody to understand. But coming up as a kid, I could only imagine this kind of magnitude, this scope of a character that resembles me having this kind of treatment. I can only imagine that and hope that I would see it one day. And you know, you know what I'm saying is a big budget superhero movie with a lot of people who were not being in a black movie. It had black people, but not a black movie. It was something that was accessible to everybody, and you had a black hero front and center. And also, you see a lot of things being done with Black Panther that you're not that that black people have been wanting to see with a, with their characters. You might not have Black Bond, but they say that this movie, you can see some of this is taking place in uh, Korea. 
they say that this is not only going to be a superhero movie. You can see him at the UN and everything. Yeah. They say that it's going to be sort of an international spy thriller too. Good. That that, that worked for um um uh, the, the Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Yeah. Um, and well, what I see that's important about this movie, like what you're talking about, where you see you know a heroic character who looks like like you, you know, you can have mm-hmm. a, as a role model, is that this is a maybe the first movie I've seen since uh, Civil War where you have more than one uh, superpowered black person in it. It's yeah. usually it's usually <laughs> one guy. You got one super nigger. And everybody else is normal. Yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> and then here, it's like you know, you see lots of different people. Yeah, you get two super niggas in there; they're gonna tear up the place. <laughs> you know. Then that's when you get other super niggas moving next door. <laughs> you know. <laughs> then the whole super neighborhood is going to shit, man. But no, you're right. No, I didn't even think about that point. And that's an excellent point. And for me, that's important because I'm not saying this just for black people. I think it's important for everybody to be represented. But let's admit it. You know, this is in 2017. It's kind of crazy that. I know I grew up, and in, in, this is the first time being 45 years old that I have to see this. For me, it's, it, it's, it says something, but also it, it, it gives me joy to see kids who are coming up in all kind of ways in life, seeing themselves represented. I oh, mean, you know what? I, I'm, I totally forgot the Fast and the Furious movie. It really doesn't count as a as a black movie. You know, it's a movie where it's a bunch of people who we can't tell what the fuck they are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it gets a pass because they give it money because then Vin Diesel could be white. We don't know. <laughs> you know the Rock, I, I don't know. He's tanned. I don't know, man. Fuck, and he's gonna beat my ass if I don't get this money anyway. So yeah. <laughs> so it. I mean, it, come it, on, they're tech geniuses. They, they got super strength. They can't. <laughs> they fireproof. <laughs> <laughs> they they are the Avengers, man. Yeah. But it, the last one was directed by F. Gary Gray, and it does count kind of as a cast of people of color. But and it, but it's a good point to make because it also helped with Black Panther in that sure. it gave people confidence in that people of color cannot because mm-hmm. they'll they'll give you some shit like, well, you know it. We, we, over here in America, we're not racist. We got you, man. But, man, there's some fucking Chinese, you know. Chinese, like, no, we love this shit. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so it works. Uh-huh. It works. And, then, you know, and then it should be given credit as far as the, paving the way for Black Panther 2. And I, Asians, I hope, you, <laughs> I hope y'all do get y'all's day, man. Because, you know, y'all, y'all, are owed to, y'all are owed it to yourselves right now. I don't know how Marvel fucked y'all over like that. And they really did. You can you can uh, Ghost in the Shell was one, but Marvel is priding themselves on being like multicultural right now. Uh, I don't like what they did with the ancient one; it's debatable. But y'all got y'all got iron fisted on that shit. Right? So, y'all, yeah. Sorry, man. I'm sorry, but, but as far as it's it's a it's, it's a great day that we we're seeing little bits at a time, gay people being represented. We're seeing uh, uh, that's why uh, Wonder Woman was such an important thing because you know why we're just not getting Wonder Woman uh, to put the Marvel I mean I'm sorry the DC universe right or why are we get a, a Wonder Woman movie right now and the, the way it is I don't know you know but women are getting their day and that's why that was such a big deal it should be noted that cultural culture advancement in these movies gives everyone what they want sure I mean you can you can go ahead and say what you will about the uh, you can say what you will about the, uh, the the blackness in this or everything about this movie where, you know, it's reference to Africa. But make it setting this in Africa. People want something different with uh, superhero movies. It is bringing something different. It is. You know, this is taking the culture of Africa, putting it in a science fiction setting, which I love what they did with Wakanda right there. As I mentioned before, I love the way they, in, uh, they have it mixed in with the environment and nature. Uh, you want something different in superhero movies. Everybody does. All these cultural advancements that they're making these films are giving some, something different to people. My last point here is that it is important for young people of color to see this. Some people are saying that this is going to perhaps one day uh, when this movie comes out, right after it comes out, it's going to bring back another wave of cultural awareness, having people looking up their history. I, was, I told you, I came up in the days of hip hop and I've gone, I've seen all phases. And a lot of people, they seem to forget that in the in the late 80s, early 90s, they went through that whole uh, conscious uh, uh, Afrocentric uh, uh-huh. phase. They had people write in. Stetson Sonic was a. They wrote a song everybody loved back in the day called Africa. And it was catchy. And that's what it was about Africa. Angola, Zimbabwe, Tanzania, Zambia, Mozambique, 
Botswana, so let us speak about the motherland. Yeah, didn't they do that on the Animaniacs at one time? Zimbabwe, yeah. <laughs> 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 Botswana. <laughs> Hey, they are black. <laughs> I mean, they might be in white face, but they <laughs> the animaniacs were black. <laughs> black maniacs. But uh, <laughs> it got to a point where brothers just did their whole thing with hip hop was to dress up like African African garb. They were they were African. Meanwhile, they never went to Africa, but they, but they found a field that looked like Africa, and they dressed up in the, all the clothes and did the whole they did the whole the the whole uh, motif. And turn on my stick, pitch a bigger, native liquor figure. The pull of the trigger goes zoom, not boom. Not a bunch of sissy, but saviors. <laughs> Man, he bought that stick at Pier 1. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> These niggas ain't been to Africa. <laughs> shit, that's in Brooklyn somewhere. <laughs> in a dirt field somewhere. And I can say this shit because back, in the, back at that time, now, it was treated sort of as a, uh, as a fashion statement, this, you know, the whole... Yeah. African thing, you know, people, and for better or for worse, you know, you look at some of the stuff that was uh, represented there, you know, the colors that you saw and some of the brightly colored things in the early 90s came from that African self-consciousness that was uh, being uh, uh, put into a lot of this hip-hop culture. You see the hats that they're wearing, salt and pepper right here, and by the way, that other band was called uh, X-Clan, uh, uh, Funkin' Lesson is what it was called. <laughs> Man, Marzo, yeah, fuck you too. <laughs> but... One, and, but a lot of kids were out there, uh, they were looking up things, and they were being, getting a lot of self-awareness and mm -hmm. self-pride. Look, when I was a kid, I, I had one of them African medallions too, man. <laughs> did you? I did. Oh, I had one of the, you remember when that was a <laughs> yeah. thing? I had one of when I was uh, 15, 16 years old, I got my <laughs> African medallion, man. Ain't been to Africa yet. But, <laughs> but one I day, Corey. But yeah, what's we, that? We, we, when we do our tour next year, we should count on, we should focus on Africa. No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not exactly ready to go on safari yet, but but you know no. <laughs> nah, man, you know it's uh you know I'm out and I'm and, and people are saying that this might bring something back with people. The, the fashion that people are looking at right now, they, the people are saying that the shikis might come back in style. Some people are saying I'm going to start getting my own. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it sounded good to you show the picture. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say nothing, Mark. You're going to get one too. <laughs> yeah, I'm going I'm to go ahead and dust my uh, African medallion off. Man. <laughs> Pull out of storage, get ready to go see Black Panther <laughs> with pride. Yeah, people, that's it, it. You know, there are a lot of reasons, but those are some of the main ones. I know, speaking from my, my own point of view, why this movie is important to a lot of folks out there. It's not just that it's a movie coming out uh, with black people in it. It's a movie that means a lot to people because they have never seen this kind of representation of themselves before. And it's a, an expansion of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm -hmm. They'll, you know, we'll see this. I'm sure it'll have a tie-in somewhere, but that leaves this whole other area that they can always revisit at some point. Yeah, and let's just admit it, man. You know, Marvel's been killing it. Right when you think they can't do nothing different, mm -hmm. Thor drops, yeah. Spider-Man drops, and then this right here. If y'all got a trailer, a movie, DC, y'all, been you might want to wait <laughs> and ask what Marvel's doing or what they're about to do. And I also love some of the things that they give winks at. It's, it's all about the fans still too. They say, hey, you know, we we got you, the, the, all the fans out there. Some of y'all wanted uh, because Angela Bassett's in the movie. Some of y'all wanted Angela Bassett as Storm. That may never happen now, but hey, we'll give you a little nod to it a little uh -huh. bit. Yeah, she plays Mama Panther here. She, yeah. You know, she's got that hair, that that gray hair right there. You can't help but look at it and say Storm. Sure. Shit, I think she's actually causing a snowstorm right there yeah. right now. Well, and the two of them get married in the comics, which they can't do here because of the rights. Oh, really? Yeah, but Black Panther and Storm. Oh, okay. I did not know that. And. Uh, and you know, like I said, people, I can't wait for it to come out February 18th. Everybody should go see it because it's just if you even if it's not from uh, you know from a culture uh, cultural uh, uh, standpoint, it's just something that's bringing something. February 18th. In. Yeah, February man, 18th. Used to be a time when somebody say February, I'd be like, oh no, but now February is a hot month. I'm telling you, man. Especially for superhero projects. Yeah, yeah, it's done. Deadpool changed shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, did he? Uh, was that January? Uh, no, I think it was February. February, okay. Yeah, yeah Deadpool changed the game. Yeah, yeah. It's going. You are not going to get a slow season anymore after a while, man. That's how it's speeding up. And if you, if for any reason, you, we should all go see this movie. It's just to find out what this nigga is doing right here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> this man in, with the plate and the green suit. I like the way he just. He, he knows how to wear that plate. He does, mm -hmm. but I like the way he's wearing it with confidence too. Yeah. Like, like, like. 
like he's just sitting like, no, that, what, what plate yeah, in my mouth? What, what are you staring <laughs> at? Yeah, huh, what? <laughs> yeah. Which kind of makes me mad because it's like, hey, man, pick one. Either go pimp business casual or go full African. Don't sit up there like you. Like, they know, like they're not supposed to pay attention to this plate in your mouth. Nigga, you know you got an ash tray in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs>